Hello, my name is Michael O'Keefe, aka The Movie List. If you enjoyed this interview and want to hear more top-notch film industry conversations, please press the thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell to stay in the know. Hello, Richard Bell and Sam Ash Arnold. Before we talk about your movie, Brotherhood, tell me how you're faring during this global pandemic. Um, I've, uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, for me, my life hasn't actually changed that much uh, because I've always been a bit of a homebody and because uh, I'm a writer, director, and like a self-creator, like, you know, my, my office has always been my home. So, you know, that's my sanctuary and that's where I do my writing and that's where I'm the most creative. Um, for me, yeah, things haven't changed that much. Like to be told or to be encouraged to stay close to home uh, and keep a low pro profile for me at where I'm at in my life is actually a little bit of a, a, a pleasure. Like I'm someone who likes to stay close to home and have my creature comforts and whatnot. Uh, of course, you know, what's happened to people and to our economy and to the arts community has been absolutely devastating. Um, and for me, I was a little bit sad in March, you know, that a lot of our screenings got canceled. But um, now that the, you know, the storm is slowly subsiding, like, you know, it's all coming back and, and, and people are still interested in Brotherhood and they're rebooking it. Um, so for me, it's just, you know, really literally been, or figuratively and kind of literally, it's just been kind of like waiting out a storm. Mm. Well, yeah, I've gotten a chance to be creative more than usual, too. I'm doing a lot of writing as well as reading, uh, making the best of it, seeing my friends when I get a chance with, uh, you know, taking the proper precautions, social distancing in the backyard every once in a while. It's not so bad up in he here in Canada. Our cases are going down a lot quicker. So, yeah, I've been doing well. Yeah, Sam is reading the classics as well. He's reading Dracula. And he's reading uh, Moby Dick. Oh, my God. That's right. Call me in, that's very, that's very impressive. That is impressive. Those are, those, are good, those are good ones to uh, pick up. I, I like it. I, I encourage everyone to read. All right. So, Come Richard, who, who is the desired audience for Brotherhood? Besides everybody. Who likes maybe is specifically the audience for this film, do you believe? Um. It's interesting because like as it's begun hopscotching around the country it's and at the screenings that I've attended anyway like a lot of the people who are coming are actually kind of like a 50 55 plus crowd mm -hmm. now I, I don't know if that's I, I mean I think that's happening for a couple of reasons I think it's because even like pre-pandemic or rather pre-pandemic uh that was a crowd that was still going to movie theaters um you know it's the right. crowd you know they don't know how to download something Ill illegally thanks <laughs> off. and you know like like my mom like when she wants to see a movie she doesn't know how to get something on Shaw on demand or on itunes she actually goes to the movie theater so i think it's it's that um because they 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 enjoy or they enjoyed uh going to the cinema also because when they hear it's a true story they have uh it makes their ears prick up a bit because they have some kind of connection to cottage country or cottage culture or to the past you know the core of the lakes that kind of thing um so so i would say that that's the the audience that we're getting however i i would say that probably my dream audience would be um probably younger people and specifically younger men um and and you know because of the themes of the movie um because of the um and, and because of the lessons or what i hope are the lessons learned of the movie okay uh so sam tell me about your perspective um during the shoot was this enjoyable what was it like of course um i always love working on movies but this was especially interesting because i got to do my first scene in a water tank which is a really unique experience. Um, they had like rain effects going on above us. It was super immersive. I've never, I've never shot something where it was so easy to get into character <laughs> because you have that environmental element. Like you don't have to pretend mm. for you know a lot of the intensity. It just comes naturally with the waves crashing into your face and <laughs> everything being so hectic. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Those are real reactions. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Richard, uh, what is the most important part of the filmmaking process to you? 
Uh, I would say that the most important part of the filmmaking process is being richly prepared for mm. the shoot. Um, and I, I think for me, like the reason, like my favorite part of making Brotherhood was production. And uh, I would say that probably even the easiest part of Brotherhood was production. Um, it was shot very fast. Uh, uh, it was shot obviously on, you know, on location. We were chase chasing weather and having to deal with a lake. And um, I was working with miners, but n none of that for me made me kind of nervous or anxious. Um, it was always quite easy for me to pivot uh, when a problem came uh, or deal with an emergency or put out a fire or come up with a creative solution to a problem because I was so prepared. Now, I was kind of forced to be prepared, that prepared because I started working on Brotherhood in 2011 uh, and we didn't shoot it until 2017. So I had a lot of time uh, to, uh, sh you know, sharpen my pencil uh, mm. and be ready. Uh, but I would say that that is the most important part. I, I feel that about, I feel that we had a very long prep, um, which is good. Uh, so we were in like prep and pre-production for a while. Uh, I feel like that applies, being prepared applies to all departments uh, and specifically, particularly to the actors. Um, it, it, was, uh, it was very important to me that the actors got together as much as possible before we started shooting. Um, I mean, of course there was the obligatory like paddling lessons, but also we had, uh, we went to a, like a, we went to a, like a lodge, like we went to a cottage uh, in the woods and the guys had a chance to like spend, like have an overnight together and spend time together. Uh, it, it's just, yeah, for me, it's just, it's just as being as prepared as possible. So when, you know, the, you know, when you're in the kind of like the Sturm und Drang of production, you're just ready and you're, and you can weather it and you can deal with it. All right, uh, Sam, so tell us about your preparation. Um, this is a period piece. Did you uh, do some research into uh, the 1920s and did you try to speak with a funny voice? <laughs> <laughs> Richard actually did encourage us all to write uh, a couple pages about our character. So of course, in doing that, uh, to get ready for it, I did do some research and I I found out the kind of things I might be into and how that would influence me. And I, I talked a lot in the paper about my relationship with my brother, because that's big in the movie, and mm -hmm. how boys, you know, interacted based on how they were raised back then. Um, yeah, I certainly did take the preparation seriously as Richard encouraged. And I agree that that is... Uh, very important for an actor, even though, you know, what, what comes up on screen is something that takes sometimes two minutes to shoot, but mm -hmm. to make those two minutes as powerful as possible, it's weeks and weeks of, you know, work for that one moment. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a cool uh, idea to write a couple of pages about your character. That must have, uh, um, it must have made uh, more sense to you going forward, so finding the truth of your character. Yeah, especially in the emotional scenes. I find it helps to have something personal, even if it's just like a memory um, that can mm. get you going that's specific to your character. I think, right. I think uh, Michael, it's very much like being uh, like an Olympic athlete. You know, like, mm -hmm. like look at, say, like a power lifter at, you know, the Olympics. And it's just like they're on stage for like a minute right mm -hmm. yeah but like you think of all the preparation that goes into that minute uh and all the work that goes into it and not to kind of like oversell this idea or to make it like over dramatic or anything but like when you're on a set and and um and you're you have limited time and also limited resources it sometimes it really is like run and gun mm -hmm. um, and you know, akin to the the point about being a power lifter, it's like you have to be ready. So for that one minute of of uh, of filming, you're you're hot and you're good to go. And and also like you have to live with that minute for the rest of your life. Right. <laughs> right. Because this isn't this yeah. isn't 
this isn't theater. Like, mm-hmm. you know, this doesn't just dissolve into the atmosphere. <laughs> this is, it exists in perpetuity. So like, you know, when Sam's 85 years old, his grandkids <laughs> can watch Brotherhood and see him when he was 14. And that minute, uh, whether he was ready or not, is enshrined. Um, and, and I have to live with that as well, right? Like ultimately I'm, you know, the captain of the ship and I'm responsible for what happens on deck. Uh, well, to use a Moby Dick reference, there you go. Um, <laughs> so, so that's why for me, it's important to, to, to be ready and to be prepared. And, and I, I uh, like I went to drama school. So when I was younger, so I was at a theater school from about 19 to like 23 years of age. So, so process and the actor's process is something that I, that I understand and, and appreciate and respect. So for me, like, say, like doing a two page character, um, you know, profile, like that's just something yeah. that just, that was just like regular homework that we did. I like it. So Richard, um, how did you discover this story? Yeah, so, um, well, I'm a Vancouverite actually, and I, uh, and it's kind of interesting how it, it took a Vancouverite to find this iconic, dramatic Ontarian story. <laughs> but I was living, I, I've been back and forth to Toronto for, for many years, and mm. I lived in Toronto in the 90s and in the yeah. mid zeros for a bit. Um, and <laughs> I just happened to be uh, at, a, at a restaurant in 2006, and I was reading a newspaper, and there was this tiny little story about an anniversary mass that was happening for the Brotherhood of St. Andrew, uh, 80th anniversary mass at the time. Um, and, uh, and it was just a tiny story about this mass that was happening in Kirkfield and, and it described the story and I thought, wow, what a great idea for a movie. Like it just sounded, it sounded, it, it just felt so cinematic to me. And then of course, also, uh, I guess in my, uh, naivete, I thought, oh, that would be a great idea for a movie because it, it all takes place in one location. So it will be really inexpensive to shoot. Um, but I was very wrong about that. <laughs> well, it all works out in the end. Um, exactly. So, Sam, um, you're from Ottawa, which is great. This is an Ottawa-based show, uh, and I would I would love for you to tell us how you uh, built up your acting chops in the city. So, I've been doing theater classes since I was about nine, mm-hmm. and acting in little school plays before that. But I decided after my first time anywhere near a professional performance, when I was all done and I felt really good, like I loved the feeling of performing, I asked my mom how kids got into movies because that's where my real passion is at. I've I've Mm. always wanted to be a filmmaker, a director, a writer. So we just looked it up and we found uh, an agency in town called MTI. So I went to an open call and they liked me and I started off with little parts and commercials and gradually made connections and you know my my net spread wider and wider until I started getting roles in feature films. What were some of the movies uh the, the foundational movies that made you uh what it, what what to be in some of yourself? Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. And Star Wars and stuff like that when I was really young and before that uh Toy Story. I Oh yeah, fun. You know, I watched all the time. Um Recently, you know, movies that have inspired me are indie movies like Brotherhood. Yeah. I love the sincerity behind them with such a, like a small crew making art for the sake of it and not necessarily a big corporation influencing it. So that's part of what drew me to Brotherhood in the first place. Um, you know, knowing that it was a, an indie story uh, and there was, you know, people behind it like Richard who who are really devoted for, I mean, devoted to the craft for the sake of that instead of, you know, monetary gain. Okay. So Richard, uh, what, what do you think about what he just said? Do you have like a message in this movie? What's, what's the point of making these smaller movies? Um, well, uh, I, I mean, I, I, this, I make smaller movies. Interview. Probably, but not by, not by choice, not by, it's just, because that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Like, trust me, like if I had a $20 million budget or if I had a $50 million budget, I would be quite content. Um, But I I definitely understand what Sam is saying by, uh, I think for, 
I think for human beings and, and I think for human beings who have gone through this crisis specifically, it's just like, it just shows how important authenticity is and how we're always, I think, constantly seeking authenticity. And, um, and yes, like it, it, it's great to kind of like watch movies that are, that are big and colorful and explosive and, you know, popcorn films. Um, but, you know, the best popcorn films are like, say, as Sam has mentioned, like say like uh, Star Wars is, has, has a feeling of sincerity and authenticity and, and great storytelling behind it. And, you know, for me, th those are the kind of pictures I want to make. Now, whether or not it's a small budget or a large budget, I think it's possible to make, I, I think it's possible to kind of make anything into a prestige project if you're coming at it from a place of auth authenticity and sincerity. And I think that that authenticity should apply to everything from like an actor's performance to, uh, you know, a cellist's performance in the soundtrack to you know how a how a prop is built or how a prop is handled um you know with respect and care uh how a shot is set up and you know even all of this the stuff that be goes on behind the scenes the spirit of the film the esprit de corps that you would uh inspire the cast and crew to have as you all hurdle towards this same goal i think that like i think that I think that audiences are smart. And I think that when an audience watches a film, they can tell certain things. I think they can tell if the film was fun to make, or I think they can tell if the people uh, who crafted the film were well-meaning. Um, and, and I think that those are, I think that like movies that aren't like that, they may make a lot of money, uh, but I think that ultimately they're a flash in the pan and I don't think that they, they would stand to test the test of time. Like why does Toy Stories stand the test of time? Like why does Star Wars stand the test of time? They're, they were like expertly written films that were like, that were well-crafted, that, that told a great story and they captured people's imagination. And that's why people will be, you know, watching them a hundred years from now. I agree. I I think Sorry. Go ahead. All good. I agree. I don't think there's any point where, you know, once you reach a certain budget, you're just suddenly not sincere anymore. It, it's not necessarily about the budget. It's about remembering why we make art like this and why we tell stories. And like Richard was saying, I think an audience can tell when, you know, when a movie's made for a sincere reason rather than an insincere one. I personally think it's all good stuff. A good movie is just a good movie. You can make, it could be $10, it could be $10 million, right? All right, Richard and Sam, thanks for your time. Any final words as to why you think people enjoy your movie Brotherhood before I let you go? Um, you know, I think that Brotherhood is, it's a story about like a kind of courage and sacrifice that is just soul shuddering. I think, you know, like I think that sad things happen in Brotherhood, but Ultimately, it's a, it's a story of heroism and about love and about life. And I think that at this time where we are now, like trying to crawl out of this pandemic, I think that the message of the movie and the message of camaraderie and working in fellowship in, in tandem with our community, uh, I think the message is, is more important than ever. Okay, well, thank you very much, guys. All right. Thank you so much, thank Michael.